Well, Rob, always uh, pleased to come down to the Green Yards have a wee chat with you. Uh, let's start with how things are shaping up, because a beautiful sunny day here at the Green Yards. Uh, summer rugby is what a lot of people want, but uh, sometimes they, they can take that back, can't they? I suppose they can, see What a beautiful day, though. Eh? And there's obviously kids playing football. There's obviously a kids' camp on here today. Fantastic day down here. The, the Mellows people say the sun always shines here, but what a beautiful day. It is, it is good, and as you pointed out, uh, the pitch behind us, as always, is yeah. used not just by rugby players, other sports as well, hockey, football, and, yeah. and that's just fantastic to see. It is, it's been well used over the summer, plenty of camps, rugby football camps from early in the morning till you know, 8, 9 at night, so that's what the pitch is for. So no, it's, it's good to see it's well used, it is a community pitch to you. Now, going back in the old days, there were things called rugby tours, yeah, which yeah. Uh, very yeah. rarely happen these days. Yeah. And uh, it used to happen when Wales came up to Scotland or Scotland went down to Wales or wherever. There was this thing that happened, which seems to have not disappeared, but it's, it's getting less and less, uh, which is why it was really nice to see Melrose go over to Canada for a tour recently, which was obviously yeah. a mix uh, of, of playing rugby and, and a great bonding thing for the players. No, absolutely. We... Probably about two years ago, just over two years ago, during COVID, there was two or three of us sitting in the change rooms one night thought, right, let's go a tour. And probably the majority of people thought we were silly, crazy, to try and suggest that during that time. But we thought it was a good thing for the young boys to look forward to. So, And basically the young guys did a lot of the organising we did. We did no fundraising, no money from the club. The, basically everybody, everybody just paid their way in the tour. Uh, we just started saving, putting away something every month, getting the young guys to do that. And we went to um, the, east, the east coast of Canada, we went to Ontario, 12 days. Three games in that time was probably just about right. We took 39 players, five staff, I would say, not hangers-on, they'll say staff, and uh, had an absolutely fantastic time. I don't mind, I'll keep saying it, the players were absolutely first class on and off the pitch they're an absolute ball so they socialized but they got the rugby side of things right as well so so that's prepared them for the season ahead it's national one of course for, yeah. for melrose same as last year yeah. and i was just saying to you beforehand the national one last year was the the gift that kept giving right to yeah. the end yeah, uh, we was. had uh, six clubs in with contention including melrose yeah. then it went to five then four and three and then yeah. right to the last day yeah, last and these are the sort of uh, fixtures that, that you want to see in, in a league no absolutely sure it was a very competitive league and, I, and no no decry in the premiership i think maybe the top two three four clubs of premiership maybe a bit stronger maybe but there's not much between the rest of the premiership and say the top half of national one not at all. So that is only good for the game. Very competitive. Um, so no, we're looking forward to the season. We we picked up a few injuries, head knocks and that. So we're having to just watch you don't you know go full out too early because we did not a lot of training before we went away, but we started earlier. And the season's long enough, Stuart. So uh, we're just we're just watching what we do the next two three weeks before the season starts. Where do you stand on the ten team, twelve team? Leagues, because I know certainly from my point of view, uh, and I think a lot of clubs' point of view, having a ten-team league, you can almost get the whole thing done by Christmas and then move on to other things. And representative rugby, yeah. it clears the way for sevens and overlaps, yeah. played in better weather, all that kind of thing. Yeah. On the flip side of that, there are clubs, obviously, particularly outside the borders, who don't specialise in sevens and don't put sevens events on for whatever reason. It's never uh, always surprised me that yeah. that, but that that's the way it is, and they want these two extra kind of home fixtures so uh, where do you stand uh, quite simple sure the, the, the season's too long uh, anybody who says it's not they're living in a different world because in 20 years time the present players won't do what we're doing which is almost a year mm -hmm. they, they'll not do it it's uh, it's far too long and and we ask a lot from the players and a lot of commitment but there has to be a fine line here the, the season just now is too long a 10 team league gives you time to do a cup and you do sevens properly. You know, for, for sevens to be played just now is silly. Uh, it's not the time to play sevens because people are trying to prepare for the 15s. So the poor players are trying to do that and also do get warm-up games for, for the season starting. So 10-team league, and people have got to wake up, Stuart. Like, <laughs> the, the season is too long. You know, they're living in the past, and actually the season's getting longer all the time. So, no, it's, it's, a, it's an easy one as far as I'm concerned. 
Of course, the knock-on effect of having a 10-team leagues if we move down to National 3, which doesn't really affect any of the Borders teams. Well, let's look at the national picture anyway. And at the end of this season, depending on what happens at the AGM, which is coming up next week, um, they could be going to 10 leagues right across the board, which will mean six teams will drop out. Now, there has been a suggestion that there could be a fifth division. So you go up to 50, which means that you would actually, instead of losing uh, six national or teams that want to play national rugby, you could actually gain four from the regionals who have ambition to yeah. play national rugby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that could happen? I think it could happen. I think the SAU, I'm not always, I'm just somebody because obviously I was with them for a long time, so I'm somebody who respects, everybody criticises the SAU, but they want to look at themselves first, Stuart, I think. But I think when you look at that, they, they have to be, they have to watch the travel costs and, you know, and that one, that one's a lot of travelling this year. When you look at the teams that are, are in it, like Highland, Aberdeen, you go to Glasgow, you go to Air. I mean, like we're doing a lot of travelling, so so they have to they have to respect that. So if if that fifth division involves a lot of travel, they have to they have to compensate, even because travel travel's even more expensive now. So, but I think that's really good if it's if it's extended, because um, clubs have ambition and that's good. Yeah, and of course the other side that people are always looking at, and you mentioned it there, travelling, um, and a lot of players don't want to go to Aberdeen or, or Orkney in the case of National 3. Um, they would rather play their rugby in a more regional, you know, so they can get home to families yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, so we're losing a lot of players because of National Rugby. Um, however, you know, the junior scene is still there, and I know a lot of players who could potentially play in the National Leagues have opted for regional, regional. just so that that suits them. It suits them. It's a it's a difficult balance and you know, definitely because it is a lot of travel, it's a huge commitment, but we want to try and grow the game. We need to grow the game. We need to have more players playing. We need to have it more competitive. We see that all the way along the line because we Scotland can never stand still. We can't just expect Scotland to be this uh, national team that does very, very well and is ranked about seventh or eighth in the world. To, to stay there is blooming hard. So there has to be a lot of work going on. Everybody just criticises the SRU. I think everybody wants to look at themselves and say, what are you doing for the game? How much are you trying to grow the game? How, how are you trying to get more people involved and more kids involved, more women playing the game? We've just seen the, um, you know, the, the, the women's football. So there's a huge... You know, we have to do more for girls and women's rugby. And, and I take I take that on. We, we do do enough here at Melrose for that. So we have to, we have to push on. It's not easy. Because a lot of other things to do, but we need to do that. You were national one last uh, last season. You've yep. still got Kelso and Gala in yep. your pool, and in fact, uh, I think I'm right in saying you did the double over Heriots, who got promoted. Yeah. So that was that was good. How ambitious is the club now to get this promotion for for next year? I mean, obviously everyone's targeting promotion, yeah. but there's only one up, one down, so yep. it's very very difficult. Um, but how do you see this the season? No, going? no, it is difficult. I I think we we underperformed last year. I think the squad we had, we ended up fourth. We should have done better. We, we lost a few games. No disrespect to other teams, we lost games we should have won. So, so we, we, we've, we've looked hard at that. It's not easy for us because what tends to happen is our better players, if you want our best players, will go up and play for the Knights. So where do our next players come? We have to keep producing under-18 players, which we're trying to do. Uh, we, we don't pay players below Super 6, so... So players that go to other clubs and get paid are not going to come here. So people say, well, that serves you right, Melrose. But so it's it's not easy. It'll not be easy for us to get promoted this year, the next again year. But we just want to be the best we can possibly be at whatever level. Let's move on to Southern Knights then. And, yep. and you kind of hinted at it there. A lot of the Melrose players certainly want to play for Southern yep. Knights. The same structure doesn't seem to be in place uh, at other clubs as well there's still this stigma isn't there let's be perfectly honest yeah, yeah, about no, it no, about honest. is it a borders club is it a melrose club it's very difficult to put a squad together we've got a good few injuries just now as well so it's it's is it very, six on saturday yeah, yeah, yeah one or two bad ones on saturday as well so that's not easy for us because it's a pretty small squad everybody people tend to say what do the players who are not playing do well, i tell you at the southern nights are all playing there's nobody not playing. They've not got a big enough squad for that. I think it's, it is a difficult one. I think uh, for me, it's if players have got ambition, they'll be looking to move on. You know, gone are the days that somebody can play for Hoyk or play for Gala, and then just play for Scotland. Nobody, nobody believes that's, that's going to happen. It can't happen now. 
And I spoke to John Hogg on Saturday. They still want more internationalists. Mm. So does every club. And we, you can't we, go from Hoyt to international. Exactly. So this, the, the, the sort of common sense one is they come to the Southern Knights. I'd rather come to the Southern Knights and go to an Edinburgh club. The difficulty is some of them are students. They're working in Edinburgh or, you know, it's easier for them to, to go to an Edinburgh club and you respect that. But we're open and, and, and the, a difficult thing for me is to try and get a, a really good handle on all the other the players at other clubs because, like, I, I spend my time having to watch our teams, you know, so for me to go and watch Hoyk and Jed, and, so we need more of that. And I'm trying to say to these clubs, look, just tell us as well. If somebody's playing really well and you think it's, they're worth a shot, well, well, they'll come and train with us or they'll get a chance. So, you know, for people to say the Southern Knights is only about Melvis, for goodness sake, it's totally ridiculous. So, so we want all the best young talent, if we can, or any players that have got that ambition to move on. Because the Southern Knights, as you can see just now, is a young team and it's going to be tough for them. But these young guys, they'll sink or swim individually. There'll be one or two who'll move on, they'll get pro contracts. And end of the day, that's what it's about. It's not just about the Southern Knights. The Southern Knights are, are about feeding on to Edinburgh, Glasgow, other professional clubs. There has to be that conveyor belt. So, no, no, we'll keep working it. And I think one of my jobs is to, to speak to people more. So I'll put my hand up there. I'm not send texts, not send emails, but talk. I said a good good chat with John Hogan Saturday. It was a lot of common writing, but a good chat with him about that. So we just have to do that better. We have to. And what about the, the, this myth, I suppose, that, that a lot of players talk about to me and they say that, you know, yes, as soon as you move up, you spend more time on the bench, keeping the, keep, keeping the bench warm. Is that true or not? Well, not be from now. I can I say that categorically. We'll not do that. Uh, any young players that come here, they'll, they, they'll get a chance to. It's not about, no, no player gets better sitting on a bench or not playing. They can train and train and train, but they need to play. So, so take my word that if they come here they will play well there's a couple of other things I want to talk about yeah, first yeah. of all Melrose Sevens where some people want a two day event with a, yeah. a more club orientated uh, on yeah. the Saturday and a, yeah. a semi pro on the Sunday and, and then of course there will be players who play junior rugby or, or club rugby who want to play against the best so yeah. it's getting that fine balance yeah, yeah. What is, what's kind of come out of the feedback yeah well the, the good thing was we had a Sevens this year and it was a great day I think Phil Morris did a great job if he if you've seen the quality of rugby and the teams that were here, not many people would have said that three or four months before. So I think he did a great job in getting these teams here. There's some quality of rugby. So I think the, there's, there's plenty of things we could do better. And as usual in a small town, everybody talks about them more and the things that they went well. So we'll definitely look at I think we maybe try to do a bit too much in certain respects, so we'll cut that back. We're just letting the summer holidays now. It's just at the time everybody's just coming back. So now we'll look at look at it next year. But basically, you know, Melrose Sevens want to just keep moving on, keep moving forward. But the rugby, I thought last year, this year, was absolutely spot on. Some some of the other things we could do a bit better, and maybe have to scale down a bit. But and we'll do that. And um, but no, it was great to see it, and it's still a fantastic day. So if you were a betting man, would you say it's going to be two days next year on the pitch for quality rugby? Uh, it could be. Uh, it'll certainly maybe not be as much. Everybody gets carried away with this four days. Like last year, was there was only a dinner on the on one night, and there was a um, a concert on the Sunday. So that was that was two days out of the four. Yeah, there's people, only one day of rugby. Effectively. Well, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. people keep they get in their head it's four days of rugby. It wasn't last year. So no, and I think the club needs to. And will do. Just watch that we, whatever we do, we do as well as we can. We don't try and do too much. But as I say, I think Phil Morris and his team, because he has a team there, they did a really good job. I mean, um, you know, we, if, as I say, I, actually I was busy doing a lot of things, so I watched most of it on, on the replay, the, the ties and the games. But I thought the rugby was really good. Well, just finally, let's let's go to the the real hot potato topic at the moment, which yep. is obviously concussion. Yet again, season after season, something happens. We've had this Times article, of course, about uh, poor Siobhan and what happened to her, yeah. um, which was absolutely dreadful. It made, made terrible reading. The upshot of this, not just in Scotland, but world rugby, Welsh rugby as well, are being sued effectively yeah. for uh, the game not being safe and not protecting. What can a governing body do to make rugby safer? The whole, the whole concussion one is, is not easy. I think it's, I think basically you need to spend more time on technique, tackle technique. Your problem a bit of that is, 
if you get people tackling lower, that has its problems as well. Uh, we need we need not to uh, want to get away from the, the, the high shots and the high tackles. But when people tackle lower, most of the injuries come with knees on head. There was one I saw South Africa at the weekend, the boy faffed the click. And it was just because he got his head... A complete and, accident. It was a complete accident. It happens. So, But I think for youngsters all the way through, everybody has a responsibility to, to spend more time on tackle technique. I'll guarantee virtually every coach spends a lot more time on passing than doing tackling. We tend to think when kids are young, we teach them how to tackle and think, I'd say, no, 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 we have to keep on doing it and do it better and better and better and better. That will reduce the injuries because that's when most of them come in. Most of them come in the tackle. So so that is one thing. Uh, but it will never, we'll never, you know, and, and also now, if I think about it, Stuart, for, I like to talk about when I played, but now anybody who's a knock on the head, they're off. That didn't happen before. So, so that is, that is good. Everybody is far more conscious of that at every level. But Stuart, when you look at the number of games that are played, you can't have. We, we struggle to get doctors at main games if you want, second team games, youth games. You're not going to have doctors there. So, the people that are coaching have to be very responsible. Anybody gets a knock on the head, they're off. But I would say the big thing is spend a lot more time on tackle technique because if people look in the mirror, I bet they would agree they don't spend enough time on that. And every sport has its risks. I mean, you fell yeah. off at Lauder, didn't you, your horse? Yeah, I fell off a gala, a stupid old man. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, so that just, you know, that, 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 that's you. And, and, uh, and, and nobody's got to stop the common ridings because I fell off my horse or a few people, there was more than me, fell off at times, but they're not going to stop it for that. So, But I think that is the sensible thing, is two things. One, spend more time on technique and everybody, if anybody gets a knock on the head, they're off and you keep a close eye on them. And of course, we must say the benefits of playing any sport outweigh anything. No, absolutely, Stuart. No, I know we we're talking about going to Canada there with forty-four people. They'll never forget that. It was a great experience. First time a lot of them had ever been in Canada. Uh, we'll get our two Canadian boys coming across here in two or three weeks, and we'll get get a, a relationship going with a, a club out there. It's actually Toronto Arrows, so we're going to. You know, that is something we've got that link now, and that's what we do. We've got two boys in New Zealand just now, one boy in Australia playing rugby, so, you know, that's brilliant.